wanted to do it after the six. start, uh, I don't see... Can you identify yourself, please? Yes, my name is Keith Andes, and before I start all the introductions and everything, I, I would like, I don't see my chief here tonight, but I do want to crow about the Richmond Fire Department, so if you would just allow me a couple of seconds. Uh, the prop For 2012, the property values, uh, these are building fires, property values were $188,587,194. The property loss of those were $3,000,000. $617,784. Property saved by the Richmond Fire Department was $184,969,410. I'm sorry, $969,410. On the content value, $12,564,410. Uh, the content, content loss was $1,877,270. Content saved, $10,687,140. The total property value of uh, last year was $201,151,604. The total contents loss was $5,495,000. Uh, $495,054. The total saved, $195,656,550 by the men and women of the fire department. On the canvassing last year of smoke detectors, which I know you are very tied into, uh, the houses canvassed for 2012 was 4,266. Uh, contacts made were 1,633. Batteries installed, 144. Smoke detectors installed, 384. Door hangers, 2,052. So that's, we're not just sitting around the firehouse just like my brother in blue is not standing on the corner. They, we are trying to make a difference in the communities that we both serve. Uh, Madam Chair, and members of the Safety Committee meeting, and to my brothers and sisters in the fire department and to my brothers and sisters in blue, I, I can't thank you enough for showing support tonight and I appreciate everything that y'all do on an everyday basis. My name is Keith Andes. I am president of the Richmond Professional Firefighters Association. We come before your committee this afternoon to speak with you about benefits and pay raises for firefighters. I have in my hand a challenge coin. We have adopted this challenge coin, one for a sister that's fighting cancer in our department that we have sold to collect money for her. So tonight our thoughts and prayers are with her. But I am going to give, extend one to y'all as a committee. I have uh, to push, well, we adopted this coin, excuse me, in the fire service for the challenge each other, to push each other when times are tough. Well, it's time to expand and give one to our city administration and challenge them because we as firefighters are in some tough financial and changing times. We are here tonight to ask questions and to see how we can solve our issues. As we know, all know, the economic impact of this last few years has taken a tremendous hit to all of us. Federal, state, city, and most importantly, our household budgets have had to tighten due to rising cost of fuel, groceries, living expenses, child care, and health care, to list a few examples. We also have had to be creative in finding cuts to get through the period of our history. With that being said, we also have been living on promises that have gone undelivered. Over the last five budget years, Richmond Fire and Police have gone without any pay raises with the exception of, one, of a $1,000 bonus two years ago with after taxes came to be about $600. While we know this was given in good faith to offset some dry periods of no pay raises, it has been nowhere near, near in keeping with inflation rates over the last few years. From the U.S. Department of Labor, Bureau of Labor and Statistics, inflation figures for 2009 through 2012 are as follows. 2.7%, 1.5, 3.0, 1.8%. Inflation rates as they are, we have continued to lose ground every day we go to work. At the minimum, a 2% cost of living rate, wage is necessary just to maintain where we are and not lose further ground. With that being said, what, 
what also must be factored in since June the 1st is the health care plan that has been contracted through the city and has had a rise in the rates for employees in the family plan, especially those with the family plan as much as $100 per month. We have also had an increase in the mandatory life insurance policy and the $50 to $60 increase this month for the payroll tax. So you start to see why we are here tonight. We also don't ever want to forget all those heroes that have walked in our boots before us, our retirees. Their voice always seems to go unheard and what they gave this city in years of service can never be repaid. Unfortunately, they are mostly on fixed incomes and are dependent on COLA raises which haven't kept up with the rising costs with which I spoke of earlier. The challenges are before us to find ways to curb the increases that have made, up, made us dip into our own pockets to pay. A firefighter recruit from completion of their 22-week training five years ago to today have not seen any pay increases. This was not what the recruit was told when hired. The city advertised the position of firefighter entry with salary at $38,400. With all the increases mentioned before, the firefighter who now wants to start a family is now making below the starting salary through no fault of their own. Also an important, as important, the pay range and the chances of them attaining top pay and their classification will be almost impossible to achieve unless changes are made. Tomorrow, I will have 35 years in this profession I so love, and I have never reached top pay in any rank, in any rank, 35 years on the job. Again, the challenges before us are substantial. We, as well as our brothers and sisters in blue, are seeing that the future of this workforce in both departments are starting to trend towards people having and taking jobs in other departments. Retention is one side, sign that all is not well. The taxpayers have an investment in this employee. Their tax money goes to hire and train these individuals at an estimated price of $100,000. This is an investment which, when the firefighter leaves, the taxpayer gets nothing in return. The department starts the process all over again. To offer a solution to this and keep quality employees is to bring back the scheduled pay plan developed in 2007 for police and fire. With this plan being re-implemented, it would go a long way in showing good faith from the city in that we want to, you to stay as an employee to raise your family and take roots in the Richmond community. This will also show the citizens the commitment the employees have to them being the best trained, focused, and at the ready workforce we can have. Our belief also would be to re-implement the career development program. This program allows for the continuing education and up-to-date training techniques so that we can keep the skills for future challenges. Now, how do we find the money? First, we need to form a task force, much like the one the mayor put together to study our retirement. Persons from the medical business, citizens, and one member from each department to look at options, plans, companies, see what other localities are doing to offset the continuing rises in cost. Cost that, if, that we continue to hear may go up each, or 5 each year, 15 percent each year over the next five years. This is a big ticket price that has a tremendous drain on the overall budget. We have to think outside the box and come up with a healthier workforce that uses medical services less. We can accomplish this if we try. We came together, we, well, we came before you last year and talked about savings we could find if we went to a different response model. With that being said, we have had a consulting firm hired by the city that said the same thing, what we said for free. We provided for nothing a consulting firm, what we provided for nothing a consulting firm charged uh, $150,000 to $180,000. This was an estimated $2 million savings to the city budget that we found that as we as employees brought to light, we have many more issues on various topics that we would like to sit down and discuss with council and the CAO. We appreciate your time and we always enjoy coming before you. Again, thank you for what you do. And to the men and women in blue and uh, fire department, thank you and stay safe as always.
I'd like to speak. My name is Stacy Rogers. I'm the president of the Richmond Coalition of Police, and I work here in the city of Richmond. And I look around, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's warming to see brothers and sisters coming together. And, and I'm going to tell you, I don't have a prepared speech out here. I'm just going to speak from, from my heart. And, and I'm going to tell you what's going on with the police department. And it's going on with the fire department, too, I'm sure. We're losing guys, okay? If you were to come and sit in a roll call, sit in a patrol car and listen to two police officers talk, and you didn't know them, you didn't, had no outside thought with that, you might think they were angry, you might think that they were even crass about some things. But the truth is, and people don't really want to necessarily say, is that people are worried. They're worried because they haven't, they haven't been paid. You got a five-year guy who hasn't had a raise at all. He doesn't have any hope that he's going to have a raise. Just when he got to the point where he was going to be able to go to career development and move up, it was taken away from him. They don't think a raise is coming, ever. Now, I looked at the crime stats, and I'm going to tell you back, you go back to 2005, and they were higher in 2005 than they were in 2004 and 2003. In 2005, the unique thing that happened in the police department, police officers were very upset because we had gone to an eight and a half hour shift, and it was terrible. It was lousy for our families. We couldn't concentrate on our work. Since then, we implemented a new payment plan, okay? And they came to me and they said, Officer Rogers, this is what, this is the plan. You can, you can bank on this. You can look at this and you can see what you're gonna make throughout your career. And every year, this is what you're gonna get here, here, and here. And guys, and men and women that are standing in this room today, they looked at that same sheet and they took the city on face value and said, that's what it is. And they made their plans based on that. And we understood five years ago when we took our pay plan away. We understood the economy was bad and we knew the times were rough. And we were, we were told by sometimes that we were forced to have jobs. And we are thankful to have jobs. And we do have good jobs. But you can't forget about us forever. We're losing people. We've lost 27 officers this past year. It cost $100,000, just like the fire department, cost $100,000 to hire and train that officer. But we're losing more than just the money. We're losing those years of experience. I'm glad that, that, that here the citizens talked about how the police have, have been responsive and how crime is lower than everyone. And it's half of what it was in 2005. You gave me another profession where I go and I make twice as many widgets or 50% more widgets than anybody else. And you cut my pay every year. Okay? In, in other professions, you're going to be looking at getting a bonus. You're going to be looking at getting a raise. With the police department, we feel, and, and look, it's, it's rare to have these guys here because they don't want to be here. Okay, they, this is their day off, this is their time off, and they spend a lot of time in the city given, and they're here today so that you understand and hear it. So I really want you guys to, to pay attention to that and take this back to the mayor and other members of city council. The $2.7 million is, is one thing. It, I was told last year it cost about a million dollars to bring back career development. I'm not sure that that's a, an accurate number, that's a, it's a number that I was given. I think it's probably less than that. But let's say that it's real. It cost $2.7 million we lost in officers last year that went to other jurisdictions, that went to Chesterfield, that went to the state police, that moved out of state and went to somewhere else. Because they're still doing law enforcement. But they're doing it somewhere else because they don't, they've, given, they've lost hope and the city is going to fix things for them. And we need to restore some hope. Because the other thing that happened in 2005 and 2006 and 2007 was we hired a whole bunch of officers. And those officers are now... Finally, three, because it takes, not only do we, the six months in the academy, but it takes about three years for them to mature and really be able to give back to the community. And we're seeing the fruits of that now. And just at this time, they're leaving. And so we're going to have to pay the money and we're going to have to spend the time. In the process, of the things that have happened is we have less police officers on the street as a result. Specialty units, things that have made our citizens safer and they enjoy are being sucked away and then moved back into patrol because we've got to have, when you pick up the phone and call 911, we're coming. They said before, you know, that they took forever to get there because we were short back in 2005. We didn't have anybody working for us. We finally got guys. We've got to keep them. This is a cost savings for the city to bring back career development. We need to bring back the step plans for, for everybody else. It's a, we, look at it, we look at it as a promise from the city. And I'm telling you right now, I've got an officer who's sitting in this room today who's at his take-home pay, 25% of his take-home pay is going to health insurance. 
how does he, how does he, how do, how do we raise, how does he raise a family? I mean, we ought to be able to raise a family as a police officer and a firefighter. We're not asking to get rich. We just want to be able to raise our families. Please take this back. We need help. Guys are, guys are worried. And, and it's hard for guys to, to say that because we're, we don't like asking for help. You guys are in control of us. You guys have our, our futures, and we're class A personalities. We don't, we don't like, we like to be in control of ourselves, but we're not right now. We need some help from you guys. We desperately need some help. I said earlier, you all are the backbone of this city. We would be nothing. This council and the mayor would be nothing without you all. You all shut down and God help Richmond, Virginia. I'm telling you that now. You all got the power. Not us. Not the mayor. You all got it. So remember that. You all got the power. You let our phone start ringing off the hook, as Melvin said. You let the other council members start getting the phone calls 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Police aren't coming. Police haven't been here. We got shooting going on. We got this. We got a house fire. We got people trapped inside of this building. You all shut down and see what happens to Richmond. That's right. We can't shut down. I, that's right. I'm just saying. We're coming. I'm just saying. 198, listen, 1996. 1996. And Steve, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're a patrol officer out there with me when I was out there in those streets. 160 homicides. Yeah, the police came too when they had enough officers to send them out there. When they won't sick, or they won't quit, or they won't, we didn't have enough officers, and we had crime just going everywhere. And we felt like, hey, where are the police? And the police felt like, where's the citizens? They don't trust us, they don't want to work with us. No, we didn't trust them, and they didn't trust us. Firefighters, we could care less if you came or not. Let's build and burn. And I'll give you a prime example. Madison Arms Apartments. Right there at Lynn Haven. Let them burn. Why? Because it was drug dealing, prostitution, everything in, in, in that place, in my in district. I wasn't on council, and I was just a citizen out there fighting with the people. So don't say we got the power. You all got the power. And I know you're not going to shut down. I'm just saying, suppose we didn't have enough officers. Suppose, enough, suppose the officers left. But as they are doing, as they are calling me saying, we're going somewhere else to find another job. We can't even make it as a firefighter or as, or as a police officer. We're getting nothing. Give us a reason to stay. That's, when I, that's what I heard when I was campaigning. That's what I heard with the firefighters in my district and the police officers and the, shirt, the deputies. Give me a reason to stay. Tell me what you're going to do for us. Don't just get back in that seat and do nothing. Will you all hold all of us accountable? And the mayor, hold him accountable too. He's got money in the rainy day fund and everywhere else. He's got money for his trips and anything else he wants. Damn it, pay attention to you all. You all need to stand up. Look at the citizens that are here fighting for a police chief because he has an open door policy to us. Not just me, all of us, all of us council members, we've been able to call him, the citizens, all of that. Think about it. Just think about it. I, I agree with you, but I, I think the power of the citizens of Richmond is what drives this city. We'll make it what it is today, and without them... But Keith, you know why? Because you all have changed us. You, in 1996, I didn't believe in anything. I didn't believe in nothing. I did not ever think we would be a role model. Richmond, Virginia would be a role model. How did they do it? I've heard other people say, how did Richmond, Virginia do it? How did they get the crime rate so low? Because of community policing, us working together. And you know when I was campaigning, you and I talked to you, and we said we want to bring the police and the fire together. We even talked about the FOP Club, the, that, that place right there in the 8th District. We talked about that. How can we come together and iron out some differences? Y'all are on the same page. Y'all are working together. I mean, that right there says a lot. And you're right, the citizens are going to be behind you. The citizens, but that's one, two things you don't mess with in Richmond, Virginia. You don't mess with the police officers or those firefighters. You don't mess with them.
Anybody else wants to speak? I'm going to make it real quick. This is something for you guys to hear. But this is what I say to all of you. I've been here 15 years in the city. In the last several years, my opinion is worse than what it's been. So we need Barclay. to so John Barkley. I'm sorry. John Barkley. I work City Richmond Police Department. Police Sergeant. I'm asking you guys to speak up and talk about the stuff that we're dealing with. All right? Because you guys speak up. And you know what? Go back and tell somebody else you work with. They need to speak in here because you said it right. You talk in the cars. You go in the cars, everybody talks about it, right? It happens. The voice needs to be heard, and I turn this to you guys. You guys need to hear about this. I don't know how to fix it, but I'm presented, they're going to present it, and we need to come up with some solutions to make changes because for when every year I bring them less money and I got a family to support and health insurance to pay, and they're talking about doing it again. I took a loss every year for the last four years, five years. You were going to five years. I bring home less money. Is that right? Where is the investment in me? I've been invested for 15 years, and I've given my heart out to this place. But you guys know me. There are things I've done through this department. Have I not given my heart out? Oh, yeah. Where, where's the reinvestment back to me? And all these people right here, we need some help. That's right.
every weekend that I'm not working my normal job, I'm at Shaco Bob, towing cars, riding parking tickets. Why? Because I haven't had a race five years. And I need to do that to make ends meet. I lose money on health care, I lose money through payroll taxes, I lose money. 25 years I've been here. This is the third time that I haven't had a raise for a period of time. And again, I positively love this city. My kids go to city schools. My daughter graduated from community high, from community high school. I love this city. My wife's a nurse at MCB in the emergency department. We love this city. We moved from Hanover to the city of Richmond because we believe in the city. I walk my dogs through Churchill, where I live. I run through Churchill, where I live. I positively love this city. And I have my entire life. I'm 47 years old. I've been a cop for more than half my life. It's the only thing I know how to do. I've been a cop for the city of Richmond my life. It's the only thing I know how to do. It's the only place I want to be. I've given back. Something more personal. These guys know you guys may not have my third marriage. Why? Because cops go through wives. That stuff happens. <laughs> People are mad. You're laughing. You know what? Hey, you might have another one. <laughs>
they're hiring five, $5,000 a year more than what we're starting at. And these are people that have been here for five years. And they can leave the, fire, the city of Richmond and go to Henrico County Fire Department and make more money. They can make like $5,000 just by walking out of our door and theirs. And we don't need to be losing people that have been trained on our system in our city and our buildings. So anything we can do to, to retain the people is a, is a bonus to us and it's a benefit to the city and the citizens. So I would, I would really appreciate it if you guys could work on this with the mayor and see if we can get some, some money back into our system. Thanks.
boys, and, and they went through so much before we have the equipment that we have today. So, yeah, I, I apologize for not bringing that in. Thank no, you. I, uh, again, they, they need to be <coughs> thought about in their hearts and prayers, and, and yes, show we can care about it. If I can make one little comment, and, and again, we do have a lot of specialized training and, and everything that entails, just like the police department. It, our, my chief can very well give a 75 cent raise to employees that have special certification. He can do that at the drop of a hat. I asked him, and I would ask him again to do so, because that's something that he can do to show that, hey, we, we understand all the training and everything. I mean, paramedic, to get a paramedic is, is a year out of someone's life. And it's not just the days of world duty. This is year around that they have to do this. So yes, my chief can give a 75 cent pay step, or not a, a pay uh, increase to, to people that have specialized training in here, and, and I hope he does. Not that 75 cents a great amount of money, but it sure would make, it would show his support that he's behind us. I, I just echo the same thing, man. I think, look, police and fire, we're in this together. We're tied and we and, and you know, we're, we're a little different in, in our organization. But ultimately, we're all here as a calling to work. I mean, you know, and uh, we just need some hope. I mean, that's quite honestly, it just, we just need some hope that, that things are going to get better <coughs> someday. Soon. Soon, yeah. Because I'm telling you, because it's not soon enough for those guys. It, it, it's not that those guys, I, I listen to you talk about it, it hurts you that they're going just to Henrico or Chesterfield for money, but it's, it's not that they're going just for $5,000, it's just because they can't afford stay here anymore. It costs, it costs too much to work here. I have to go somewhere else. That's what's happening to guys. They want to stay here. Nobody wants to leave. It's a pain in the tail to leave. It's a long process. We don't just drop an application and go down and interview the next day and then we're hired and we start the next week. That's not how it works for us. We put in, we put in a lot of heart and soul to get the patch that we wear. Okay? We had the academies, and I don't know how the fire department is, but I know what the police department, I did a lot of push-ups, and I gave a lot of sweat, and a lot of blood to be here. And I don't want to give that up to go somewhere else for nothing. But if I can't afford to, to live, and you force me to go somewhere else, and that's what's happening, then they got to go. And the city is going to hurt for that. And we don't like that. We don't want that. We want to be like mad. You know? You just need some help.
that was my number one issue, and it still is. Um, we talk about crime and education, public safety and education. Uh, I've always said that public safety was 1A for me, and education was 1B. Because if we don't feel safe in our own homes, if we don't feel safe to walk around the block, then economic development is a joke. We have to make people feel safe, and you all do that. Uh, and I thank you. I know my constituents think a lot of you, and I apologize for not passing that on to you all the time. But I will say today that I know that they care a great deal about you. And so I want to, on their behalf, say thank you as well. And we're going to, well, I'll speak for myself, and I think I speak for my colleagues here, but. We're going to do uh, what we we're going to do better than we have done. We're going to do better by you. You deserve it. You earned it. Uh, and I want to say one last thing. We uh, put some money in the budget years ago, and it's now gone uh, for uh, police and firefighters and teachers to move into the city to help you with down payment, close and cost assistance. A loan is forgiven uh, after five years of your home. Uh, and I'll. So I want you to live in Richmond. I know all of you don't, but I'd like for you to move into the city. It's a great place. So let me say that I'll put that money back in the budget. It's $125,000. Not a lot of money, but if you want to own a home in the city, we're going to help you do that as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. My Tom Graham. I'm retired from Master Fireman in the city. I've been with the city over 44 and a half years. The last 10 of which have been retired. The last pay increase I got was from the Club of Ireland. And it's for a whopping 0.0075%. That's been over five and a half years. Thank <laughs> you. 